grappling. Kevin and Julia Garrett were accused of spying by China back in 2014. They were held in jail, both of them. Join me now from Abbotsford, British Columbia. We appreciate you giving us your time today. Thank you both. Welcome. Thank Glad you. to be here. If you could take us back to that time, what exactly unfolded? You both had been living in China for a number of years, and then all of a sudden you were investigated and then arrested. Well, we'd been living in China for 30 years, and uh, one evening we went for dinner with someone who wanted to talk about their daughter studying in Canada, and actually it was a, a set-up dinner, and uh, we were uh, abducted right after the dinner in a what was an empty lobby of a restaurant when we first came in. And then taken to a private location and, and interrogated, held in isolation, unaware of each other's whereabouts for six months, isolation and interrogation every day for up to six hours. My goodness. I, you know, and we're trying to sort of get a sense, of course, of what these two Canadians are going through now, very, you know, to, you know, in comparison to what you went through. What went through your minds as, as this was all unfolding and then you realized you're now under arrest for, you have no idea what, but being mm. released was quite unlikely? At first, you don't believe it. You think it's just a, a mistake and it's going to be over quickly. Mm -hmm. And we have no idea of what's going on worldwide. And then as it unfolds and you start getting into this intense interrogation and you realize it's the Ministry of State Security, which is really the FBI, you start to uh, realize this is a huge deal and we are somehow implicated for innocently for something that must be beyond ourselves and you have no idea what it is. Kevin, yeah. what was the response from the Canadian government? What was that process like to get you both home? Well, we, we really didn't ha know what the Canadian government was doing. They said they were working on our behalf, and, you know, many people were aware, and the government's working at this at the highest levels. But in terms of details, I didn't know. Our family was very much in contact with the government, was listening to what they said and kind of following their guidelines. And ba basically their uh, stance was uh, prayer and quiet action. When you are now seeing the situation with these two gentlemen, Michael Kovrig and Michael Spavor. Um, you're hearing the prime minister saying that there are efforts that are being made both, you know, in public and behind closed doors or, or private discussions or whatnot. What are you both thinking right now as we, we, we've heard from some of their family members as well saying desperately they need to get them home. It has been way too long. Well, I strongly believe the government is working and doing all that they can right now. Mm -hmm. and but it's pain, more than painful for the family, and I feel for the, the family of my, the two Michaels very much. Um, you know, I was unaware of a lot of things that were going on. Uh, Julia was a bit more aware of things because she was only detained for six months than on house arrest, basically, for 17 months. Mm -hmm. But, you know, we're thankful for what the government did, but you need to, you know, maybe take a strong stance on things as well. Well, and that's been a call that we've been hearing. Uh, and Julie, I want to get your sense as well. As you, as, as Kevin mentioned, you were in jail for six months and then under house arrest for another 17, trying to being able to get a little more information compared to what you both were going through at that time to what we're seeing here now. And, and Canada essentially being sort of caught in the middle between a dispute between China and the United States involving uh, Huawei and their CFO, Meng Wanzhou. Um, how does that sort of compare in, in terms of trying to find any information you possibly can to, to work through this? I'm very conflicted inside because, of course, I realize that when you're in that situation, time turns into seconds. And everything I would say any time I ever had a chance to make a statement from inside or from just outside waiting for Kevin would be, do everything you can, just get us home before something happens and someone dies. So that I understand. After I came out... And I got a bigger picture. I realized how conflicted even my family was throughout the process and the people buying, like, really on our side, mm -hmm. just really trying to help mm -hmm. us. And I, I, I just believe strongly that we have to persevere with, with action, but we cannot bow down to another country's demands. And we have to find the, the, the fine line between those two things. Yeah. And that would be uh, where our stance is right now. Yeah, absolutely. How have you both been able to move forward from this? Well, it, it takes time. It really takes a lot of time mm -hmm. to get back to normal. You can't, you know, you think you're out, you're, you're free, and you can jump back into normal life. You don't. It takes months and months to find your balance again. And, um, you know, a lot of that we, we detailed in, the, in our book, Two Tears on the Window, 
And, uh, you know, for we had, I guess our strong point was we had a lot of people behind us, churches and family members who just really strongly supported us and encouraged mm -hmm. us. And uh, that was a huge, huge help. And we're encouraging our extended community just to be encouraging as you can to the families. Just mm -hmm. all we need is to know that there's a community standing by with them, that they're not alone, and that the Michaels in every way can know that they're part of a community that cares, not just mm -hmm. in a big sense with big statements, but in a everyday sense, mm -hmm. we're all committed to fighting forward to see that, that this situation can be resolved for them. Well, we commend your bravery and your strength. And, and of course, I know the families will hold on to that, knowing that the community is there with them. Kevin mm -hmm. and Julia Garrett, Canadians formerly held in a Chinese prison. Again, I appreciate you both giving us your time today. Thank you so Thanks. much, and we wish you well. God bless you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.